Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ashley Nessler, and today I'm going to be talking about metacognition and how we can use metacognitive strategies in our classrooms. To get started, I'm going to be talking about information processing and breaking that down in between both metacognitive knowledge and how we can use that in the classroom. So when discussing metacognitive knowledge, it's really important that students are learning and monitoring their current and recent thoughts. And through that metacognition, as students develop, they will develop factual knowledge and strategic knowledge. Factual knowledge is much more task oriented, where they will be able to start associating certain tasks and certain processes that they physically do with factual knowledge. Looking at strategic knowledge, students are learning different procedures to help them problem solve. For example, in a social studies classroom, thinking about adolescent students in both middle school and high school, strategic knowledge can involve them learning how to write a research paper and the proper procedures of both creating an outline and formatting their papers to best put forth their ideas. In the classroom, students can put together factual and strategic knowledge to critically think, which is what we as educators find really important for our students as we are one of the main adults in their lives cultivating and curating ways for them to learn how to critically think and problem solve on their own. And also in our classroom, students can adapt and manage different thinking strategies as we as educators present them with several different ways of thinking through both differentiating our lessons and creating multiple entry points for our students to learn. As I will be teaching both middle school and high school students, we have here a student named Jane Doe who is in ninth grade. And due to her adolescent age, she has the ability to understand her thinking and problem solving processes better than the average student in elementary school, kindergarten, and preschool. This is because she has been in an environment longer where her problem solving and her thinking skills have been put to the test. She also has a much better understanding of these meta level strategies. While this student may not understand that they are called meta level strategies, she knows what studying techniques help her the best and how to better organize her notes as opposed to just writing everything down in a straight line or not outlining her notes before studying for an exam. The good information processing model goes to speak about the impact of the outside world on our students and how students are both impacted by parents and teachers when it comes to me metacognitive strategies. As these specific strategies can be developed, we see in courses such as math, where students can learn relational knowledge and how numbers are related to each other and how different strategies of solving, for example, a long division problem can be used as there is more than one way to solve a problem with long division involved. In addition, the good information processing model also talks about how students will understand the benefits of processing strategies and they will then see how a good result from these processing strategies pushes them on in their educational journey. One large key theme that I've been able to read throughout chapter eight and through previous chapters in my education journey on child psychology is that motivation can be extremely result-based. And when discussing the importance of motivation with our students, it's really important to focus on metacognition and how teaching our students these specific strategies can keep them motivated as when these students see positive and high results in exam grades and how they feel in a classroom and their overall understanding of what they're learning, these motivation-based practices can be extremely helpful. For example, when we use practice exams in a classroom, students can look at their preparedness and see whether or not they are truly prepared to be assessed on what they've learned. And by going over these strategy practices and these practice exams, we as educators are forcing our students to think about their own ideas when it comes to studying and rather than following the baseline of maybe what their friends are doing to really find a strategy and a meta metacognitive strategy that works for themselves. In, in addition, 
in a social studies classroom for both middle school and high school students, by having a writing prompt of the week, I will be able to have students focus on critical thinking and help them weed out their thoughts just by writing and using stream of consciousness writing processes to help them better understand not only the writing process, but their own thoughts as well. In addition, by reviewing with students both good and bad examples of studying techniques, I can go over the metacognitive strategies with my students. Instead of calling them metacognitive strategies, we can just call them good and bad examples of studying habits and teach the students what better strategies there are out there for them to use if they want to succeed. And then also, I believe in the use of exit tickets, which are quick student surveys for students to reflect on the day's lesson that are filled out prior to leaving the classroom for the day. As an educator, that helps me assess where my students are in that moment right at the end of the day. And it also helps my students reflect on if they truly have the ability to grasp what we learned in that specific class day. Thank you so much for your time today and have a good afternoon.